Paul preaches at Corinth. Acts chapter 18. After these things, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth, and he found a Jew called Aquila, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome, and Paul <coughs> went to them. And because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them, and they worked together, for by trade they were tent makers. So, when Paul writes to us, I know he was inspired by God, but we've got to remember that this was a man who was also a working man, who knew what it was like to use your hands to make mistakes, like when you're making a tent, I'm sure you make mistakes. Oh, I didn't measure that properly, I didn't cut that right, no, I've got to do it all again. He'd been through all that, just like Jesus did, as he worked, maybe as a carpenter. Well, Paul reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded Jews and Gentiles, Gentiles are people who aren't Jews. But when Silas and Timothy came down from Macedonia, Paul was occupied with the word, testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ, that's the Messiah, the promised King of Israel. And when they opposed and reviled him, he shook out his garments and said to them, Your blood is on your own heads. I am innocent. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. Well, actually, God and Jesus had decided right at the beginning of Paul's service that Paul was to go to the Gentiles and Peter to the Jews. But Paul seems to have wanted to keep going to the Jews, and whenever he turns up in a town, he goes to the synagogue, preaches to the Jews, some of them believe, but some of them then get really angry with him and persecute him and nearly kill him and chase him away. And it could be, really, that Paul would have saved himself a lot of grief in his life if he had focused on the Gentiles and not kept provoking the Jews. But God still worked with him, and that's how it is with us, that we might make decisions in our lives that are not really ideally what God wanted, like Israel wanting to have a king or a physical temple. And God goes along with them because he respects our freedom of choice, our free will. But we make life more difficult for ourselves than it need be. Anyway, Paul went on from there and went into the house of a man called Titus Justus, whose house was attached to the synagogue. And Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed in the Lord Jesus with all his family. And many of the people of Corinth, hearing, believed and were baptised. So you hear the gospel, you believe it, and then you're baptised. That's very clearly the pattern that there is. And during the night in a vision, the Lord said to Paul, Don't be afraid, but speak out, and don't keep quiet. For I am with you, and no one will attack or harm you, for I have many people in this city. So Paul, like us, got scared. These people in Corinth, it seems, were aggressive, and the Jews there were a bit against him. And so Jesus appeared to him and said, No, keep on keeping on, keep going, because I have got many people in this city. And so Paul lived there for a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. But when Gallio was the consul of Achaia, that's the area where Corinth was, the Jews with one accord rose up against Paul and brought him before the judgment seat, saying, This man persuades men to worship God contrary to the law. But when Paul was about to open his mouth, Gallio said to the Jews, If indeed it were a matter of wrong or criminal behaviour, O Jews, it would be logical that I should hear with, bear with you. But if there are questions about words and matters of your own law, you sort it out. I refuse to be a judge of those matters. And he chased them away from the judgment seat. And they all grabbed hold on Sosthenes, the ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat. And Gallio cared for none of these things. And Paul, having stayed after this for many days, left the believers and with Priscilla and Aquila sailed to Syria. Now, after this, he stayed for many days. Well, I would have been inclined to run away, thinking, oh, these Jews are going to get me sooner or later. But all the time, you see Paul's commitment to the things of the gospel. And he just kept on keeping on, not regarding his own life or safety. And so he left the believers, and with Priscilla and Aquila, he sailed to Syria having shaved his head in Sancria, because he'd made a vow. And they came to Ephesus, and he left them there, but he entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. Well, he just said before 
from now on I will go to the Gentiles. But although he said that, you see, he was very human like us. And he underneath wanted to really preach to the Jews, wanted to do Peter's work. And so he does it again at Ephesus. But when they asked him to stay a bit longer, he didn't agree, but he left them saying, I will return again to you if God wills. And that's what we should always say, God willing, because we don't know exactly what God's will is. And we can't assume that we do. He then set sail from Ephesus, and when he landed at Caesarea, he greeted the church and then went down to Antioch. And having spent some time there, he departed and went throughout the area of Galatia and Phrygia, strengthening all the disciples. So, because of that, there arose this church or ecclesia in Corinth. And later on, you read the letters that Paul wrote to the Corinthians. And so here in the Acts of the Apostles, you read of Paul going around preaching and baptizing. And then later in the New Testament, you read the letters that he wrote to those churches, those converts that he'd made, those Christians he'd baptized or that he'd led to baptism. And so all the way through, you see his care for people. He went round, we just read, all Galatia, strengthening all the disciples, because our aim is not just to baptise people, but to help people towards the kingdom of God, because all that we do is because we love God and we want other people to be in his kingdom. Not just baptise, but to hold on to the Lord Jesus, to God's truth after their baptism, and to come to the kingdom of God so that they might glorify God and the Lord Jesus forever and ever.